I miss talking with my friend Bob. He had a way of making conversations really fun. And uh, sometimes when people interrupt you, it gets kind of annoying. But when Bob interrupted, he always had something really important to say. So we would be going on talking along and long, and I would get to a part where I would run out of things to say, and I would just say kind of, well, well, well. And he would interrupt and say, that's a deep subject. We have a deep subject today when we think about uh, prayer and Psalm 4. There's, Psalm 4 is a huge deep subject, a well of, of uh, information, a well of uh, thought about the Lord and uh, how we pray. Uh, nevertheless, and of course we can't cover all of it, but I, I did want to bring it out. And thinking about prayer as answered yes and answered no and the Lord's role in all of that and our role. So Psalm 4, a deep subject. Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. In your anger do not sin. When you're on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Some have said that this Psalm 4 is the, com is the nighttime companion to Psalm 3 and uh, David's flight uh, from Absalom that we talked about in the last devotional. Uh, one writer, uh, J.A. Motyer, said about verse 1 alone, True prayer is urgent, resting in the righteousness of God, specific and dependent upon divine mercy all in one verse and then those themes are picked up throughout the rest of it and that idea of coming back to God's mercy you see David uh, was a man after God's own heart and we know that the Lord answered David's prayers and gave him deliverance from enemies but David also had a number of his children die and one in particular that he prayed for for a whole week uh, as, a, as a young child and it died uh, in, in spite of all his uh, fasting and prayers to the Lord. What happens about that uh, when we get a no answer from the Lord? Do we just give up? Well, well, it's a deep subject, of course, but uh, at this point, uh, David doesn't, and he just keeps going to the Lord in prayer. And he believes in the sovereignty of God, and prayer is a begging it's an, it's an asking with urgency to the Lord about things. But in the end, a contentment to rest in God's promises and rest in God's answers, even if we don't like those answers. Now, uh, you're welcome to weigh in on this because uh, prayer is um, one of those things that we have all uh, had to go through with unanswered prayer and with answered prayer. And, and to work with that. And I know we can't see all the purposes behind it. Job couldn't see all the purposes going behind his situation. Uh, but we also need just good old comfort when uh, not just intellectual purpose uh, in all of these things. And so as I was looking through the New Testament, I discovered again what's already been there, that in the context where Jesus urges us to ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you, in that context of asking for the Lord in prayer, in Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 13, he says, How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I think this is good direction because the Holy Spirit then gives us 
the comfort of his grace and his uh, 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 presence to be with us and applying all of God's sovereignty toward us that we can just remain content in God's answers to prayer. Not that we don't stop asking, but maybe the most important thing about prayer is that God changes us. Yes, God is changed by our prayers, and I suppose that's because he has determined beforehand, even before we pray, that he's going to be moved by that prayer, and he is sovereign. But um, maybe the best thing is to have the Holy Spirit to help us understand these things, purpose, but also the comfort, the emotional comfort and the trust that comes with God's presence. God's going to take care of his people. And even when we get a no answer, God's going to take care of us.